a conservative member of parliament actually suggest that the former governor general has somehow been compromised by the PRC. This is the kind of hysteria that I alluded to in my statement. Thanks, Chair. Uh, Mr. Mitrovica talked about gutter comments, of which he's very well acquainted. Um, he's written columns filled with disgusting anti-Semitic tropes. <laughs> this guy's garage. Like and subscribe. Thanks, Chair. Mr. Baxendale, you've published uh, several books about Beijing's connections to organized crime and influence operations here in Canada. Have there been repercussions for you personally or for the company for publishing these books? Um, absolutely. I've been targeted by the MSS uh, for the better part uh, since I started on this journey uh, a number of years ago. Um, absolute uh, uh, articles, editorials uh, directed at both me, uh, my authors. Uh, of course, I work with some of the most prominent people in the world, uh, from Benedict Rogers to Dole Canisa, obviously Sam Cooper, who is just being discredited uh, by uh, the last witness, uh, and many others who have uh, deep knowledge and, and understanding of of uh, what has been going on here in Canada. Uh, so yes, I've been a, a target and all of my authors are. We heard shocking testimony uh, at this committee about uh, Beijing's treatment of diaspora communities here in Canada. Uh, are you able to, uh, to um, offer any context or uh, based on your experience of that? Absolutely. I work very, very closely with the China diaspora communities, the Uyghurs, the Tibetans here in Canada and around the world. Uh, I know their stories. I've met with them. I've hear, heard the horrors of, 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 of deaths inside Xinjiang. I've heard of the disappearances of friends and family members in Hong Kong. Uh, and the China diaspora community who are loyal to democracy and freedom are sick and tired of listening to politicians and others espouse the virtues of our great uh, relationship with China and that we should continue on based on the economic uh, opportunities with China. So they're very upset and they express that to me and, uh, and they will be, there are voices in my upcoming book as well. Uh, have you read the Johnston Report? I've read parts of the Johnston Report uh, and uh, I find it uh, interesting, uh, but I do think that uh, both the PMO and CSIS Brass uh, did not provide uh, actual, uh, uh, the actual um, readout from the meeting with Handong. That, does it amount to a whitewash? I can't say, say that. I think Mr. Johnson is working in, in the best interest uh, of, uh, of trying to bring transparency and process uh, to, uh, to a very complex issue. Uh, do I think that, the, that he is a rapporteur, is in, uh, in a strong position uh, to speak uh, objectively on the issues and, and uh, arbitrate? The answer to that is uh, I believe it, 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 it would, it's difficult given his ties to China. Uh based on his ties to China. Do you think that, um, that Mr. Johnston's been the subject of elite capture? I think Mr. Johnson, over his 40-year career, has had a positive predisposition to, uh, to China and the PRC in hopes that we could uh, establish economic uh, opportunities and gains for all Canadians, to which I believe they fully subscribed and believed. Uh, we have seen that that kind of approach has been certainly naive and it's certainly being countered with countless reports in the United States and, and the UK and even here in Canada. Uh, based on... Uh your reading of, uh, um, of the Johnson Report based on um, the research that you've done and uh, the, the folks, as you've mentioned, in the diaspora community that, that you've met with before uh, and uh, before the report and, and up to this point, do you think that there should be a full public inquiry? Absolutely. This is uh, our national security. The future of democracy is at stake. Uh, we need to really investigate and understand it from all different levels. Uh, so absolutely a full inquiry should be called. Are you familiar with the uh, remarks that uh, the question of privilege that Aaron O'Toole raised in, in Parliament uh, a few days ago? Yes. And uh, does that sound consistent? Does what he described sound consistent with how the United Front Work Department operates? 100%. I have countless uh, cases and uh, documents, uh, both uh, declassified uh, information and reports that, that would uh, support uh, Mr. O'Toole's view. Well, why would Mr. Johnston have written that uh, in his report that, that the claims about Mr. O'Toole were hard to believe? 
I think he's being given a, a set of information, uh, a very small team. I don't think he was provided proper access to documents. I, I think that that comment uh, is clearly um, made based on, on that information that he's being given. And I think he has not had all of the information, nor did he, uh, did he actually call a, a, a number of witnesses that should have been called uh, to testify and to provide them with a counter to what others are saying to him. Does the government's approach to this amount to a cover-up based on the, uh, the, the, the type of um, information or, or the, the limited amount of information provided to the, the individual, the special advisor to the Prime Minister? Mr. I, I, I think successive governments who have uh, leveraged their relationship with the PRC um, uh, to their own benefits, um, it's in everyone's vested interest not to disclose or to bring out, uh, I think, and, and clean house with respect to this issue. Um, I've got about 45 seconds left. Um, can you give us an example, or, or can you just elaborate with a lot of the time remaining on Beijing's influence operations here in Canada? The Be Beijing's influence operations here in Canada are, are extensive, obviously started in the 80s. Uh, we have, uh, in the upcoming uh, book, The Mosaic Effect, we chronicle the United Front's uh, infiltration operations on the West Coast, which was ground zero. Uh, these include influencing of, of business leaders. Uh, unfortunately, organized crime often is at the same table. Uh, brought in through the United Front, and they are uh, take pictures with uh, photo ops with every political party, uh, and their influence operations are extensive, including it to Jenny Kwan's office, which has been going on for, for over a decade, from my understanding. Mr. Mitrovica, um, we heard uh, a little bit of, I think, um, disbelief or disagreement from Mr. Baxtendale about your... Um, opening statement and uh, in particular I think an author Sam Cooper and I understand he also had some visual reactions to your statements in the room I'm wondering if you have a reaction to that well I didn't discredit his reporting his reporting discredited itself uh, I'm also uh, astonished to hear uh, uh, the uh, panelist and <laughs> A conservative member of parliament actually suggests that the former governor general has somehow been compromised by the PRC. This is the kind of hysteria that I alluded to in my statement. Thanks, Chair. Uh, Mr. Mitrovica talked about gutter comments of which he's very well acquainted. Um, he's written columns filled with disgusting anti-Semitic tropes. He's written columns including lies about Jews murdering Christian children in Europe. And he's compared the men and women who served in the IDF to being members of the mob. So um, I certainly didn't add him to the witness list today. I have no lessons to take from him, and I have no questions for him. Thank you, Mr. Chair. M Mr. Chair, I'd have to say that in my time uh, on these committees, I'm not quite sure that I've witnessed the type of attack uh, on a witness that I've, that I've witnessed here today. And I think out of courtesy, I'm going to provide Mr. Maitrovica the opportunity to respond to what I can only say was a fairly defamatory attack on his character. Uh, and so I will use my time to allow uh, the witness to respond to that from the, uh, from the, the defamatory attack from the conservative member, if he so chooses. You're on mute, uh, Mr. Mitrovica. One has to consider the source, so um, I'll leave it at that. Um, I, I just want to ask the committee to listen to what I had to say. Um, invite Paul McNamara here. Invite Peter Merrifield here. Okay, I got one more minute left. And we okay, do have that on the record. We don't need to repeat yeah. it on the record. Okay. Oh, uh, let me you, go back you to said the that you stated you that. The, sorry, sir. Hang on, hang you on. Mr. Green, the, your time. Go ahead, sir. Mr. Green. Right. Thank you. You stated that um, the media coverage of China's foreign interference is hypocritical given Canada's history on foreign interference. Can you expand on this? I, are you asking me? Yes, sir. Um, well, it's hypocritical because um, um, I think that I, I made mention of this in an article uh, when Christian Freeland uh, 
uh, uh, stood beside Herr Bauer, uh, the former president of, uh, of, of Brazil, and um, and tried to overthrow a duly elected government in Venezuela. And the columnists and reporters in Canada praised her from for uh, for injecting Canada directly into the the sovereignty of a sovereign country. And and so when we do it. It's it's to be applauded. Uh, when another bad actor does it, it's it, it's to be condemned. So uh, there is a inherent democracy, I, uh, uh, hypocrisy in, in, in that attitude that I think needs to be uh, at least acknowledged. Uh, although it's not going to be accepted uh, by uh, I, I suspect members, several members of this uh, committee. Okay. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mitrovica. Thank you, Mr. Green.